All right. Well, I think we're going to call this meeting to order of the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District Board of Directors, June 24th, 2022. And may we have a roll call, please, Donna? All right. Uh, Director Brown? Present. Director Downing? Present. Director Dutra? I do not see him. Uh, Director Colin Terry Johnson? Present. Director Koenig? Here. Uh, Director Lynn will be late. Director McPherson? Here. And Director Myers will be late. Director Pegler? Here. Director Parker? Not seeing her. And Director Rockin? Here. And ex officio Director Henderson will be uh, coming in late. Uh, ex officio Director Northcutt? Do not see her. Okay. So we do have quorum. All right. Thank you. Um, we'll go to announcements. Today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Thank you, Walter. Um, go to item four, Board of Directors comments. Do any of our directors have any comments to make today? You can't see my hand. I'll just I'll just go say ahead, uh, Mike. For, for people who joined us late, we're having problems with the cameras. So we're all here. We're not uh, disappeared, even though you're just seeing a photo or a name. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. All right, uh, oral and written communications to the board. I know we've received the uh, letter from Anna Eshu in our packet. I understand there have been no additional written communications. Um, Correct. Do we have members of the public who would like to speak on items? I see one hand raised. Let me go there now. Brian from Trail Now. Brian, are you there? Let me see if I can. I see your hands going down, but I don't hear you. What's that? Uh, there we go. There you are. Hey, no, we hear you now. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. This is Brian from Trail Now. Uh, great to hear your voices, but not see you. I miss seeing you. I'm actually out in Vermont. But I wanted to call in and um, just remind everybody that, you know, our goal and the community's goal is really to get the Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor open as a transportation corridor. It's been sitting there for a decade, and it's a, a very important corridor for our community. You know, the enormous costs and physical constraints of, of using that corridor we've seen over the number of years now, a decade, and, and we really need to look at how can we open that corridor for both trail and a transit uh, you know that's that's the goal and i want to remind you all that you know the state sea level rising requirements is really a, a major restriction on how we use that property uh, and we got to find ways to legally use it and and speaking of legally keeping uh using it it's very important that we keep this property as preserve it for um as a public owned, publicly owned transit corridor, transit and trail. Um, and, you know, with segment 12 coming up, it's, there's like five bridges and, and it's really important that the rail banking process um, be applied there to ensure that we keep that as a uh, important resource. And then finally, um, you know, it's really important that we spend our, our limited resources effectively and you know as we talked about in the past we want to minimize the cost of of opening that corridor as a transportation corridor and you know that gives more resources for metro as we saw with uh, uh lift line and and paratransit so anyways um appreciate your time and i'm hopeful that we continue to move in a cost effective and timely manner for opening the coastal corridor. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I see a hand from Tate Baugh. Would you like to speak, please? Tate? Right now, Tate. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 
Hi, I just barely heard um, the board member Brian uh, mention the coastal corridor. I, I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, but I just I just need to find out like how I can be able to ask questions um, at some point because I want to understand what that coastal corridor is all about because I think it's because I think it starts to sound familiar. I'm not one percent sure though. Well, the first thing I'd offer is that uh, Brian is not a board uh, director. I'm sorry. He's a member of the public who is speaking on behalf of his uh, uh, group, Trail Now. Uh-huh. Okay, well, sorry. If, if you'd like to know more about the corridor, I recommend that you um, use the URL um, uh, SCCRTC. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll, I'll go slow, sure. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. I'm going to write this down quickly as possible, so I don't take up so much of your time. Give me a second. No, that's fine. no take your time. You're good. Yeah, it's you got, fine. You get two minutes. Okay. Can you can you tell yeah. me again, please? Yeah. S C C R T C. dot org, and that's the Regional Transportation Commission that owns the corridor. And on their website, you'll find a lot of information about that corridor and some of the issues that are going on there. Okay, because I think it's starting to sound like it's the same corridor that could be the light rail which is connected. it is it's it the is course, it is exactly that i knew I it mean, yeah next to the bike trail okay yeah that makes sense yeah because um because i'm gonna because i have some questions because i hear there's some r rumors going on which i don't know what it is and the last thing i heard was there was a testing of that light rail um last fall in october which didn't last very long like some kind of tour or something okay anyway you'll find out more about that quarter at that at that the url all right, thank you. Um, all right, um, I don't want to take much of your time, so just you can. Um, I'm, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Tate. Uh, any other members of the public that have uh, a comment or question? I'm seeing no additional hands rise. Yeah. With that, let's go to labor organization communications. Do we have any communications from our crew? I see James Sandoval. Your hand is up. Please feel free to speak. Morning, board. Uh, it's nice to see you and your pictures, I guess. <laughs> but good morning. Um, I feel like uh, we're doing this every month, but I still got to do it because uh, a lot of good things are happening. Um, from what I heard, Brandon did a good job capturing all the good things that are happening, but there's been more things that are happening. Um, just working with Michael Tree and uh, just all the ideas that we have, it's, it's just been working great um i'm sure he's going to report on a lot of this stuff uh but you know little things like you know uh he he's getting us a cardio gym so we can start focusing on health a little bit more and just having it here in operations for you know easier access uh you know ice makers for the hot summer that's coming up we had a really fun time at the bus rodeo um and we're looking to hopefully ha um or, you know host our own someday so we're planning that uh, we came up with a referral incentive to hopefully get our, you know, employees here at Metro recruiting and trying to get us a bigger class for bus operators. I think you've seen it on social media. We're blasting it everywhere. We're trying to get more people here. Um, um, we got a company picnic coming up on July 30th that I'm hoping every board member could attend. We're reaching out to a lot of retirees and hopefully it's just going to be a place where we all could see each other in person. Um, and then the last thing that, you know, we greatly appreciate that's been going on is the fact that he's been out and about. Uh, a lot of drivers um, seen him at operations quite a few times and, you know, being at the transit center and just, you know, really getting to know the ins and outs of what, what it takes to run Metro. And uh, the thing I greatly appreciate is communication. It's been there. Uh, we've been talking about everything and we're working together on a lot of great things that are to come for Metro. So. You know, I'll try not to do this every month, but it's just been a good change. And uh, as you can see, we've been pretty happy. So thank you. Thank you, James. You're always welcome to speak every month, especially when it's so positive and upbeat. I really appreciate it. Any other communications from labor? Seeing none, let's go to uh, additional documentation. Donna, I don't know that we have anything else for today. Uh, yeah, there is yeah. nothing. All right. Thank you. That takes us to the consent agenda. Are there any questions or items that the uh, board members care to uh, pull or approve as whole? Any questions or comments on the consent agenda from the public? Looking again for hands to raise. 
I'd entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. This is Mike Rotkin. See that. Second, McPherson. Is that second, Bruce McPherson? Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's uh, go to a vote. Okay. Uh, Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Uh, Director Dutra? Aye. Has not joined yet. Director Colin Terry Johnson? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Uh, don't see Director Lind yet. Uh, Director McPherson? Aye. And I don't see Director Myers. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? See her and director. Yeah, she's she's there. She at least her thing is oh, up. I'm yeah, here. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. And that's a and that's a yes. <laughs> Thank you. And director Rotkin. Aye. Thank you. And the motion passes. Very good. That takes us to the regular agenda. We have a resolution of appreciation for retiree Jane Ng. Uh, I don't have any other information, but I believe. She served um, over nine years uh, with Metro, and uh, I believe we have an action to approve that resolution. I need a motion. I will move approval of that motion. Mike Rockin. Thank you, Mike. We hear a second. Re Rebecca, second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second from Rotkin and Downing. Um, we've got another vote, Donna. Okay, Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. Um, don't see Director Land yet. Uh, Director McPherson. Aye. And I don't see Director Myers. Uh, Director Pegler. Aye. Director Parker. Aye. Director Rockin. Aye. And the motion passes. Very good. Thank you very much. That brings us to the Metro Advisory Committee. And I think I saw James Von Hendy, the chair, uh, available. We have a report from our chair for Mac. Yes, we do. I had trouble finding my unmute button. <laughs> That's okay. Take it away, James. All right. Great. Um, uh, so um, I'm going to report on the first half of the uh, year, uh, the Mac meeting. Uh, MAC met twice in February and in April. Um, and in the first half of the year, we continue to be fierce in our representation of the needs and requests of our ridership, while also respecting the, the needs of the Santa Cruz Metro itself. Uh, we strongly appreciate how Metro has continued to strive to provide uh, public transit service to Santa Cruz County, especially in these still lingering and ongoing COVID times. Uh, and in communications to the advisory committee in the first half of 2022, in February 11, on, on our February 18th MAC meeting, we revisited a re, uh, ongoing request from the public to reconsider adding bus service to the Enterprise Technology Center in Scotts Valley. This is something that we've had a number of times uh, brought up and discussed in the meeting. And uh, once again, uh, Planning and Development Director John Ergo provided his detailed response regarding the several impediments that prevent adding such a service at this time, including an apparent lack of uh, potential ridership. And uh, the fact that we have not actually heard any support from uh, the uh, university itself since they would be the primary candidates for that service. Um, and um, at, this, uh, at that same time, Director Ergo also informed us that in a response to a request from the public beginning in the spring of, of this year, Metro would add weekend trips to on the Route 20 uh, to help UC uh, Santa Cruz students get to their research jobs at the Seymour Center. Uh, finally, MAC member Elsie asked that the Metro send text messages regarding the beginning and end of school terms and Metro staff agreed to review that issue. Uh, in the April 20th MAC meeting, Ms. Elsie asked, uh, uh, said the election department would like to work with Metro to arrange transportation to 18 voting centers in the upcoming June elections. Um, 
And Ms. Elsie requested a contact person for the election staff to consider, to, to contact about that. I don't know the upshot of that. That was what happened in the meeting. Uh, member Mr. Pisano asked about Measure D stickers on the Metro buses and vehicles at that time. Margot Ross uh, uh, responded that the Santa Cruz Metro, uh, the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Committee gave approval to cover up the 2016 Measure D stickers until after the election. Uh, and uh, then Mr. Martinez, uh, also of the MAC committee, asked that the Paracruz van operators could give cash, be given cash to provide change to riders. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Ross explained that it was not an option and Brandon Freeman bus operator added that it would be a liability to the Metro. So that issue was dropped. In communications from the Metro Advisory Committee in our April 20th meeting, I reported on the letter I wrote to the Board of Directors requesting staff to create a section on the Metro's website to share the steps Metro is doing for sustainability and environmental issues um, as requested by the MAC in our February meeting. Um, one of the things about that is that uh, we know that the Metro already provides that information in various places, including in the headways. Um, the goal there was to provide a single location for the public to see the, what steps the Metro is taking. Um, as of this time, the board had acknowledged receipt of my letter at, the, at your February 25th meeting. Um, but as far as we know, the board has not directed the staff to act in any way on that request. In updates from the Metro to the MAC, in both February and April, Metro staff has always provided the snapshots of COVID-19 impact on operator staffing. Um, and uh, the cost in some cases for uh, the availability of service particularly seemed to affect the Highway 17 uh, corridor at that time. Um, let's see. Uh, the board acknowledged receipt of, uh, uh, okay. Um, in both uh, our, our meetings, Isaac Holly, IT and ITS director, report on the latest developments regarding the positive interactions with our new ITS vendor, uh, Clever Devices, with initial planning and estimated timelines. The committee chair and members, Elsie, Pisano, and uh, myself as chair, expressed our appreciation for Director Holly's ongoing efforts uh, in this regard. Uh, John Ergo, planning and development director, provided quarter, his typical reporter on the quarterly ridership reports. And in, in February, updated the MAC on the cost of providing Braille bus stop signage, something that the MAC had been asking about. Um, uh, MAC member Ms. Tyler suggested providing only the stop ID be included to reduce the potential costs of that. And in the April MAC meeting, Ms. Taylor asked for an update about that signage. And after further discussion, MAC member Ms. Elsie agreed to follow up on, offline with Director Ergo. In the February meeting, Director Ergo reported on the award of $30 million for the Pacific Station North Redevelopment Project and uh, expressed appreciation for partnering with the City of Santa Cruz on that project. He also responded to Matt questions about the access, access to the Pacific Station lobby um, in both our meetings, reporting that the lobby itself was still closed, though the restrooms are accessible, the Metro Market is open, and food vendors are also available. Uh, in the in the April meeting, uh, Director Ergo added that fencing at the Washington at the Watsonville <laughs> at the Watsonville Transit Center would be removed. Uh, and finally, in response to a previous uh, suggestion from Mr. Pisano about supporting a bus route to, to the new Kaiser facility, um, uh, uh, John Ergo said that the uh, new Kaiser Medical Facility was not on an existing Metro quarter, and Metro is not currently planning to uh, provide any service to that location. Finally, in other MAC discussions, Ms. Elsie suggested revisiting the abandoned bus stop committee uh, uh, in, her February, in our February meeting and agreed to provide a historical perspective about that committee's role and its disbanding since most of the other members on the a MAC at this time, we're not familiar with this previously existing committee. Um, in April, in the April MAC meeting, Ms. Elsie did provide a brief overview of the bus stop advisory committee. Some discussion ensued on the type of work that committee did before it was dissolved. For clarity, as chair, I asked if this was something that Ms. Elsie was hoping to have reestablished 
or re or revisited. Um, um, and um, CEO, um, Chief Operating Officer Ross said the issues of that committee are currently being handled by the operations and planning department itself. And the boss firefighter, Mr. Freeman, added that the customer service can also be contacted about information uh, regarding uh, bus stops. Uh, Ms. Elsie asked who, who the public should contact. And that was when um, both um, uh, Ms. Ross and Mr. Freeman added their information. And that, I think, is a summary of the main content of our meetings for the first half of 2022. Our next meeting of the MAC will be in August. Thank you, Chair Vaughn Hendy. That was a, a very thorough report. I see a question from Mike Rockin. I, I wonder, I, I know nothing about the construction of websites, but I wonder if our, our staff, not necessarily today, but at some point might respond to the issue about having a, a sustainability section that sort of on its own that pulls together information about things like our move towards electrification and mm -hmm. um, other sustainability issues. I have to say that 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 one issue is the main, you know probably responsible for probably about ninety percent of my contact from the public about what Metro is up to, and I think it would be helpful um, to provide. There's all, we also have scattered through the website information about the role that the uh, bus uh, service plays uh, in in uh, sustainability generally in our society and so forth. And I think there's a quite a bit of stuff there that could be pulled together in that way. And I don't, as I said, I'm not looking for an answer this morning, but I hope that our staff would consider that. And uh, if it's something that's feasible and doesn't mess up the way we're thinking about our website, I, I think it's worth you know, serious consideration at least. Uh, thank you for that. Very good, Mike. Any other comments from the board? Any comments from our attendees in the public? <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, thank you, James. Please uh, express our appreciation to the entire uh, Metro Advisory Committee for their participation this year. I appreciate all their work. I will do so, thank you. All and, right. if there's no, and if there's no other need for me, I will, uh, <laughs> I will exit. Okay, I think you can go. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. All right, that brings us to item 8.5. Uh, excuse me. Um, 11. We're up to 11. Thank you. Public hearing, final adoption of Santa Cruz Metro's fiscal year 23 and 24 budget. Uh, we have our CFO, Chuck Farmer. Hi, everyone. Um, can we go ahead and bring out the presentation or should I just share it myself? Walter, do you have that handy? No, nope, that's not the presentation. Uh, this is the short version we're looking for, Walter. I have to pull it up. I think I have it here. Let me see if I can share it. Is that coming through? Yes. There okay, we go. Get it, uh, full screen here. Okay. Awesome. Very good. All right. I'm going to move to the next slide. So um, at the last board meeting last month, I went through in pretty relative detail over the budget. So uh, to spare the time and effort to kind of go through it again, I'm going to talk just about what has changed since the last budget discussion till now. Um, on this slide right here for our budget, we have now balanced the full FY23 budget as circled in red down in the bottom right. That basically shows that we are now net zero on an operating surplus deficit after transfers. So if we move to the next slide. 
So on the May 20th board meeting, we had operating surpluses of $293,000 in 23 and then 482 in 24. Since then, we have actually made some adjustments to our COVID ARPA grant. This is money that we would be drawing down. We shifted about $375,000 from FY23 to FY24. We had uh, two adjustments due to um, changes in uh, positions, capital plants, uh, our capital planning grants analyst to a manager, as well as a mobility training coordinator. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also had to update our um, calculation for our capital and bus fund. So that made some slight impacts. So net net overall, our final operating budget now for FY23 bottom line is now zero. And our FY24 is actually a little bit higher now at 945, but we'll adjust that next year when we get into the FY24 budget. Any questions on that? We want to move to the next slide. On our capital, on the other hand, on our May 20th board meeting, we uh, showed 15.8 million for FY23, and then those projects carried into FY24 and beyond of about $18 million. Since then, we've made adjustments. We've added in two big items. This is the uh, grant that we will not know until I think August if we receive the funding but it's for 20 hydrogen fuel cell buses, as well as a hydrogen fueling station. So those are the biggest changes that have been made um, since then, as well as we've adjusted our CNG and one, seven CNGs and one Arctic. So that's about 6.2 million in 23. So net net overall for um, on our capital, we increased FY23 by about $9.7 million to go to 25.5 million. And then 24 and beyond, so this could be 24, 25, as we receive them in the future, that number dramatically increased by 43.5 million. And that's driven by like, so the hydrogen fuel cell buses, as well as the fueling station. And now we're at $61.5 million for 24 and beyond. So if we move to the next slide, get a little perspective. Um, this is kind of the breakdown now of FY23 of the 25.5. Our FY24 is about 19.6. And basically 25 and beyond when all the uh, hydrogen buses start coming in, uh, this is a $41.9 million. And down below, as you can see, we put in the number of buses to be purchased. So this kind of gives a little perspective on how we're spending our capital. Uh, we're expecting to receive about 20 buses in FY23, 15 being CNG and Arctic, as well as five electric. In 24, five CNG and one hydrogen, so the first one delivered. And really where we start to see everything are the rest of the hydrogen buses, 19, as well as five more CNGs. Any other questions on capital? So we'll move to the next one. And this, this is the last slide, and we did not present this. This is the first time presenting it. So um, our operating reserves that we're projecting as of the end of this month, um, we expect it to be fully funded, the top four buckets uh, fully funded. This includes our work and compensation reserve fund, our liability reserve fund, and our operation sustainability reserve fund and cash flow reserve fund. So. Um, you know, the first two, we put those aside uh, because we have to. And then our operating sustainability reserve fund. So this is three months of operating costs. So if something were to happen and we needed funding to keep the operations running, this would provide three months, providing no money is coming into the agency, three months of operating sustainability. So that's the 15.3 fully funded now. And then our cash flow reserve fund, $3 million. This is money that we use. Think of that as your float money. So we would have, you know, dips and valleys where we'd be sending out a lot of money out the door, but we haven't received money, for example, from our sales taxes. So this helps with the uh, ebbs and flows of cash throughout the month as we go forward. 
On the bottom four buckets, these don't have minimum balances. These bus, these include our bus replacement fund, which is now fully, um, uh, what I call is fully uh, full right now, which is basically 3 million. So this is the 3 million we set aside each year. Our UAL and OPEB is now at 4 million. So this is 2 million every year that we're putting into this bucket. And, you know, there'll be more down the road talking about how we saw for OPEB and, and so on, but this is critical that we keep this bucket, even though we did go out with a bond to fully fund our UAL, we still will end up having some kind of UAL or for that matter, OPEB, and we can use this money for that. Hmm. Our COVID recovery fund, so this is money, so this money is going to go away. This is one-time use money. As you can see, we're going to get ARPA funds over this next year, but then it's done. After that, then we are on our own, and this money is going to go help us extend our uh, service before we hit that physical cliff, which is probably somewhere around 2030, 2031. And then our operating and capital reserve fund, so this is our 2.6. So this is our matching money that we use to match certain items or for that matter, little projects that are like below $500,000 that we need to fund, such as replacing air conditioners and something broke that we got to fix and so on. And so I think we're in pretty good shape this year for our operating reserve buckets. And that concludes the budget. And so therefore we're closing out the public um, discussion period. If there's any questions or anything, let me know. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks. I appreciate the term pretty good shape. Yeah. Looking to the, uh, the board and the public, uh, Mike, I see your hand up. Yeah, I wonder, Chuck, um, I'm the board, all the board members understand what UAL and OPEB mean, but I bet members of the public don't necessarily, and it's a little complex, but I wonder if you could give people a basic idea of what we're doing there for that uh, $4 million. Sure, sure. So UAL is our unfunded liability. So that is our pension. So we now actually, our pension was underfunded. We went out with a bond and now we're fully funded in our pension. So that would be our UAL. OPEB is basically um, uh, uh, benefits associate that we pay for our retirees. So when you retire from Metro, we continue their benefits like this is our, like health insurance um, into the future. And that is an obligation of us here at Metro to pay. The reason why we have this bucket is to help is that as we go forward in time, we know that our OPEB costs are going to increase because healthcare costs increase and more people are retiring and they're living longer as well as our pension. Our pension is subject to what's happening out in the market. So when when the, when everything is going great, that's great because we have great returns and we don't have to worry about our pension. But you know, when we start going, where returns start dropping, what happens is if we're not earning a certain rate of return, we build up kind of a, a, a balance that says, hey, we need to go in and actually fund that balance. So between that balance, when we have bad returns at CalPERS or OPEB for that matter, that we have to fund our future obligations for health insurance, we're building up a balance in that bucket so that we can use that in the future to pay these balances as need be, as well as look at a strategy to take that money and possibly put it into, I'll just say an investment return and actually use those returns to pay for some of the OPEB or if there's a UAL that's outstanding. It just, it minimizes the risk that the agency's fully on, fully burdened to have to pay all those risks at once. We have something to help offset some of that risk in the future. Thanks, I appreciate that explanation. I'm sure the public will have a better understanding of what we're doing with $4 million there. Yeah, very, very good. And, and Chuck, if I could. Sure. Please, first, Bruce. On the uh, reserve fund, the, the three months of operations, historically, that's what we have uh, done at Metro. Is that correct, or is that more or less than we've done in the past? I think it's the same. But Yeah, I mean, we've been trying to keep 
we don't update it every single month. We update it like once a year based on what we expect our budget to be. We look at three months and then we update it. And yes, we are, we are initially a little bit lower than three months because we only cut, we didn't cover 100%, but we're covering now 100% of our operations so that we won't miss a beat for three months. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions? Uh, do we have an action here? Yeah. You have to hear from the public too. Yes, thank you. I, I'm uh, looking to our attendees. Any comments from the from the public? Just raise your hand. Nope. Seeing none. Ah, uh, no. Back to the panelists. Oh, hands are rising and falling. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, there we go. I, Mike, please go ahead. Yeah, this uh, budget uh, is recommended for approval by the Budget <clears throat> Finance and Audit Committee uh, two weeks ago, and I move that we approve it. Why don't you go ahead and uh, close the public hearing? Uh, thank you. All right. Seeing no other comment from the public, uh, let's close the public hearing. And we have had a motion from Rockin. I can second. This is Shabra. Thank you, Director Kalantari Johnson. We have a motion. Any discussion? We're ready I just want. I'll just. I'll just say. Go ahead, Mike. It, it, it's great to be in this uh, as good financial shape as we are. I'm sure we have some rocky uh, moments ahead of us, or days, or months, or years ahead of us. But right now, we're in pretty good shape. And uh, working for a public agency, it's always nice to know that we're not, you know, in desperate straits, which do, does happen to public agencies from time to time. So it's great to have uh, our staff's done a great job. Uh, and I particularly appreciate Chuck and all of his staff's work and when getting a budget together that reflects this really positive situation we find ourselves in. Very good. All right. Uh, Donna, I think we're ready for a vote. All right. Uh, Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. I do not see Director Dutra. Uh, Director Colantari Johnson? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. I do not see Director Lind. Uh, Director McPherson? Aye. And I do not see Director Myers. Uh, Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Yes. And Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Very good. Thank you. Next item 12, consideration of adoption of Santa Cruz Metro's amended conflict of interest code and approval of resolution confirming this action with our general counsel, Julie Sherman. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is an item that comes before the board every even number year. In fact, it comes before every local agency and special district. It's required by the political reform act. And the conflict of interest code is, is a, a document that tells Metro personnel who are listed in the code what disclosure categories they have to disclose on their form 700s. Mm -hmm. And so every two years, we have to take a look at the code, make sure it's updated in terms of any changes in the law. And most more importantly, look at the org chart and update the position titles. So that's all we really did this year. If you look at the red line of exhibit A, you'll see the changes in the code are just updates to position titles. And that is it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. After the board approves this, it will go to the county, which is the code reviewing body, and we'll be done with this for the next couple of years. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good. Any questions from the board? Comments from the public? I'm seeing no hands. It sounds uh, fairly straightforward. Do we have a motion? I'll move the recommended action. We'll second that. Oh. Well, I'll wait. Let's go. I'll wait. I'm not seconding it. We have a motion from uh, McPherson. Right, correct. I'm happy yeah, I'll to say second. Second. I'll second that. <laughs> or you can, Mike. <laughs> no, no, I am seconding everything. So like, and that was Director, that's, Director that's Downing jumping in with a second. 
All right, we had a motion, McPherson, second, Downing. Ready for a vote, please. All right, Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Uh, Director Dutra, not seen. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Aye. Director Koenig. Aye. I do not see Director Lind. Uh, Director McPherson. Aye. Director Myers, I don't see. Uh, Director Pegler. Aye. Director Parker. Aye. And Director Rockin. Aye. And the motion passes. Very good. And with that, we're on to the oral report from our CEO, Michael Tree, item 13. Michael. All right, everybody hear me okay? Yes. Well, hey, it's, it's great to be here this morning. Happy Friday. Uh, and hope you're enjoying a good week. Um, I have a, just kind of a handful of things I thought I'd uh, share with the board. Uh, I think overall, though, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm enjoying the opportunity to continue to get to know the uh, employees and uh, the union representatives and community leaders. And uh, so uh, still super excited to be here. I just want to make sure you knew that right up front. <laughs> Um, you know, I uh, I have a slide deck that has like three slides in it. Let me see if I can just share it with you. Uh, did that come up? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let me um, put it into motion here. So, uh, you know, the first thing I wanted to start off with was on June 11th, uh, for the first time in a long time, we sent a team to a rodeo. It was put on by Sam Trans up in San Mateo uh, at their uh, South San Francisco uh, yard. And I just wanted to make mention, I mean, this team did fantastic. And uh, a rodeo, a bus rodeo, you have uh, kind of two different things going on at the same time. You have some events for your drivers and some events for your maintenance team that you send. And so in, in this picture, you'll notice the drivers are wearing the light blue shirt. You've got M Mario Espinosa and Bonnie Ferris, uh, you know, long time, really great drivers. And then you've got your maintenance team. Uh, you've got Cesar Alvarez there on the left, uh, Ivan Ballesteros in the middle, and then Chris Leonard on the end. And so this was your team that went over, uh, you know, it was a fantastic day. Uh, big picnic, uh, the driving rodeo, obviously, and then numerous events for the maintenance guys. Uh, just to give you an idea uh, of the driving uh, portion of it, it's an obstacle course with like 11 or 12 different challenges. And so, uh, you know, you're driving a bus uh, all by yourself out on this obstacle course. You've got a fairly large crowd watching you. There's three different agencies there, and they've all brought their families and and then you have an announcer who is actually critiquing your performance on the uh, on the course while you're doing it. And so there's a lot of things going on. And uh, I just want to say the team did great. I think I have a, an additional picture here. Uh, so this is a lot going on. I'll just kind of <laughs> highlight these pictures. You've got uh, obviously the the buses in the in the rodeo. You can see there in that event, the driver is backing it into a narrow. Uh, a narrow set of cones uh, and of course the uh, challenge is to not knock over a cone and they each have different point values. I'll kind of go clockwise, clock, clockwise. So in the upper right hand portion uh, moving away from the picture of the bus is your maintenance team. That board is set up with all the elements of an air brake system. So of course they bug the system. They create uh, um, problems with the system and the team has a defined time to go out and diagnose all of the problems with the air system. A um, couple other pictures, lower right, that's your team diagnosing issues with the air conditioning system. Again, they bugged it with like six or seven different problems and they have a certain amount of time to, to get those. In the middle, they're working on an engine that doesn't work, it won't start. So they've got to diagnose all the problems and then start the engine. And our team started it. Uh, so it was really fantastic to watch them walk through that. And then, of course, we had, uh, you know, we had Eddie Benson from our management team on the fleet. Uh, we had Tony Castillo and his family there. You had James Sandoval from SMART. And that lower left-hand picture is a picture of uh, James Jr., James Sandoval's son. They had a really fun go-kart out there uh, that was electric, and so he was having a blast out there. But, uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody for for that rodeo because it just, uh, it was great to get back into competition and see the talent uh, at the agency. 
Um, I have just a couple other uh, events and pictures. Um, this is a picture of Candace Almansa. She's the one with the flowers on the dress. She graduated uh, recently. It was uh, June 16th from the Leadership Santa Cruz County program. She's got her partner, Andrew, there to her uh, side, and then Anna Marie from our operations management. And so that I think that picture on the right really shows, um, you know, really shows how excited she was to graduate from that program. And that was like a three-year program based on the fact that COVID was, was ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have one other picture here, and this is the last one, but I do have some other topics to cover. But we took delivery, uh, as Chuck mentioned, of the first of four new Gillick buses. Um, these are CNG. They were ordered about maybe a year ago. But I just wanted to let you know and, and see what Danielle did with the design of just these uh, four mm -hmm. buses coming in. Uh, this is spectacular. When you see it in real life, the, the colors pop even more. Uh, but it's a nice subfleet of uh, just a fun design. Uh, so I wanted to make sure uh, you saw them and had an opportunity to comment on them if you'd like. You got the big Metro logo in the uh, kind of the rear side panel of the bus, but uh, really a gorgeous design uh, on the buses. So with that, I, I think I'll stop sharing. That was it. So just a couple of other things. Um, you know, as you uh, probably saw in your consent calendar, item 810 was in regard to the renewal of your insurance policy with CalTIP. And I just had a couple of follow-up comments on that. I sit on the CalTIP uh, board and their steering committee. And uh, your insurance right now, as you compare it to the private sector, which is continuing to harden, is about 15% cheaper than what you'd pay in the private marker market as opposed to being in that insurance pool. And uh, I just wanted to let you know your, your safety rating in that pool is outstanding. There's a, you're in the top 10 basically of the pool in regard to safe systems. And that is rewarded on an annual basis with some dividends that you can draw down to offset the cost of your insurance. But uh, it's a pool of 32 uh, agencies, all different sizes. And I just wanted to let you know you rank in the top 10 within that pool. Um, in addition to those uh, buses that I just showed you, I, I just wanted to, to remind you, you have five battery electric buses. They're on order. And you also have the grant out for those 20 hydrogen buses. So I think from here on out, you know, your board or your, uh, your executive staff is working really hard to see if we can pull together funding so that we continue to go zero emission on your future bus purchases. Um, your biggest challenge, uh, as mentioned before, at this agency is, is new operators, uh, operator recruitment. And uh, the board authorized a pilot program uh, where we took the wage from $19 and like 97 cents up to $23 and 75 cents. And then uh, beginning July 1, uh, with some inflation uh, kicking in or uh, a, a, a bump kicking in, which is planned, uh, that wage goes to $24.58. So effectively coming up, you've got a $24.58 starting wage. And uh, so we, we, we've implemented that pilot. Uh, we've been advertising for a week. It's accompanied with a hiring bonus and also a referral bonus. And I just wanted to let you know the impact that that has had. In one week, we've had 23 new applicants. Oh, that's for great. Operation. Great. Fantastic. So, yeah, I think we're really turning a corner. You're in a new stratosphere, so to speak, with that uh, pilot uh, program on the, on the wage. So that's going well. Uh, COVID-wise, another big challenge at the agency, the rolling 14-day uh, uh, number for the number of positives over at the operations is 16. So we're still in that minor outbreak category, which requires that uh, they're wearing masks over at the office building. So I think it's been manageable, um, but you know it's certainly a distraction when you're putting together your run cuts and, and making your runs, which has been a challenge. So, you know, I'm hoping we turn the corner both on the operator recruitment and the COVID, uh, you know, recovery. Um, a couple of other things, uh, the agency picnic was mentioned. Uh, we've got a little committee working on a, an agency picnic to get everyone uh, together and to enjoy some good food, some games, uh, some good music and a raffle. 
I'll send out to you this afternoon, basically a flyer that we've just put together on the picnic. Uh, again, it's July 30th. It's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Be a great opportunity uh, if you'd like to come out and just mingle with uh, the employees at the agency. Uh, final two comments. Um, we're still planning on uh, working with the board to put together a board workshop and uh, hoping for September or October at the very latest. But I just wanna remind you the topics we're home, honing in on are your operations. Uh, you know, we think there's some opportunity to make some adjustments in your routes. And so we're looking at, uh, you know, having a, a consulting team come on board and help us out with a, an operational analysis. We wanna talk to you about that at the workshop. We also want to talk about the ADL and the ATC, which is your automated vehicle location technology and your automated passenger counter technology. I mean, it really takes technology and, and makes the bus system uh, perform better based on the fact that we can monitor and troubleshoot quickly. It'll give your customer the ability to look on a phone app and not only see where the bus is in its arrival time, as it relates to the bus stop and where the person's going, but also see the number of actual passengers on the bus, uh, of the bus that's coming. So it's got a lot of advantages. We wanted to make sure you knew all about the costs on that and it, that you've been obviously you've budgeted for in that technology itself. We wanted to talk about the battery electric bus and the hydrogen bus, your two options for zero emission uh, to, uh, buses and our game plan with that, the implementation plan. And then finally, we wanna make sure you know from staff's perspective and have an opportunity for the board to comment, you know about RTC's planning efforts, uh, that Santa Cruz branch uh, rail corridor, uh, that highway one corridor with the bus on shoulder project and how we view the buses will perform in that project and also the Sokol corridor. So uh, the final thing is we want to talk to you about the marketing program. We've got a really innovative uh, marketing program coming up to kind of pitch the, the agency in a new view for the public, so to speak. So we're pretty excited to talk to the board about that and get your input on that. So if there's other topics I'm missing, while well, we're working really hard behind the scenes to put together that workshop, you know, we'd love to hear from you about that. And I think the final topic before I just uh, end here is um, uh, the state budget. You've been watching what's happening with that. There's a, from what I'm seeing about uh, 10.9 billion in that budget for public transportation. And they're working through the details uh, on that. Uh, you know, what'll get funded and so on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and then you've got obviously that large surplus that is part of that uh, budget. So um, with that said, I'll, uh, I'll conclude my comments, but certainly would uh, love to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Michael. I see that uh, Director McPherson has raised his hand. Yeah, I just want to reiterate uh, a warm welcome to Michael. Uh, you've had a very positive initial impact uh, all around. And um, you know, those new, that new bus design, it looks like it even has a smile on its face or the side. So that's <laughs> even better. So uh, come on in, welcome. We're friendly people, but thank you for all your efforts. I know you've really been uh, moving around a lot. So uh, it's really nice to have you here. And uh, I just want to re uh, well, warm welcome to you and thank you for your efforts in meeting with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Mike Rotkin. I just want to commend all of our staff, uh, particularly Dawn and Danielle, uh, but also particularly call out uh, James and Smart for the work they've done on the recruitment. It's so fantastic to have so many people applying. We sometimes had like, you know, five applicants or something when we needed to fill 27 positions or something <laughs> outrageous. Um, so it's really great that we're uh, obviously making progress. And I, this, this little pilot program we did obviously would help with that, but it still takes people to get the word out and make it happen. And our, our staff and the unions have done a fantastic job in advertising the fact that uh, driving a bus is really a way to make a decent living. It's a career and we have some of the best benefits around and it's, it's fantastic the job they're doing. We, I think the whole board really appreciates it. Thank you, Mike. I would echo those comments. I uh, also appreciated seeing the photos, Michael, of the, uh, the bus rodeo. I'd seen some of them on social media from James, and uh, 
I wish we had one of those little electric buses to ride around the parking lot in. That would be kind of fun. All right, any other comments from the board? I believe with that, it takes us to the announcement of our next meeting, which will be on Friday, August 26th at 9 a.m. We plan to continue to have it via teleconference. So we will be back in this format once again. And I believe with that, it brings us to adjournment at 9.57. Thank you very much, everyone. Good job, Larry. Have a terrific weekend. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.